this video lecture, we're going to learn about the Kalman filter. As the title of this video indicates, the Kalman filter is a recursive implementation of the linear minimum mean squared error estimator. In a few minutes, I will explain what a recursive implementation of the estimator is, but before that, we will examine an example to motivate why we need such a recursive implementation of the linear minimum mean squared error estimator. So, consider that we're in a situation in which we would like to estimate the samples of a white sun stationary process y of n. And in order to do so, we can observe samples of a process x of n, which consists of a weighted version of our process of interest y of n, which is here weighted by the constant a, to which uh, a noise process w of n is added. And we can observe a number of samples of such process. So, y of n here is a process of interest which is a zero mean Watson stationary process which has an autocorrelation function ry of k and w of n is a white Gaussian noise process which has a variance sigma z squared and in addition is uncorrelated with our process of interest y of n. Imagine that at a given time n we would like to obtain the LMMSC estimate of the nth sample of the process y based on the observations of all samples of the process x up to that time. So we collect all the observations of x into one vector called x of n, which contains all the samples from x of 1 to x of n. As we already know from LM LMMSC theory, the LMMSC estimator of y of n will have the following form, where the coefficients will be obtained according to the following the offset coefficient at h0 will be equal to the expectation of y of n minus the a vector of other coefficients multiplying the expectation of the vector of observations. Now since both processes y and x are zero mean, these two expectations are zero and therefore we can conclude that the offset coefficient will be zero the other vector of coefficients, which we have called here h of n to denote that this is the vector of coefficients for the estimate of the nth sample of y. This vector is obtained from the covariance vector of y of n with the vector of observations, which multiplies the inverse of the covariance matrix of the vector of data observations. Notice that in order to compute the coefficients of the LMMSC estimator for y of n, we need to invert the covariance matrix of the observations, which is a matrix of size n times n. Imagine now that after obtaining the estimate y of y of n, we let time pass and we obtain at the next time step, n plus 1, an additional observation of the process x, x of n plus 1. And now we would like to repeat the process and compute again the LMMSC estimate of, in this case, the n plus 1th sample of y based on all the observations of the process x from time 1 to time n plus 1. Simil similarly as before, we can formulate the LMMSC estimator for y of n plus 1 and the coefficients will be computed in a similar way, h of 0 because as before both processes y and process x are zero mean, we can conclude that it is equal to zero. And the new vector of coefficients, hn plus 1 this time, will, similarly as before, be obtained from the covariance matrix, this time of the n plus 1 sample of y, with the vector of observations, which this time has one more observation, and the inverse of the covariance matrix of a new vector of observations. Let's observe for a moment now the operations that we need to perform in order to obtain the estimate of our new sample of y. First, much as before, we will need to invert the covariance matrix of the data vector, which in this case is an n plus 1 times n plus 1 matrix. So the dimensions of this matrix that we need to invert have grown by one unit with respect to the previous time step. In the same way, we can see that this operation here consists of n plus 1 
multiplications and additions. And compared to the previous time step, that is one more multiplication and one more addition than before. Furthermore, the estimator needs to keep track of all the samples of x from time 1 up to the time in which we want to estimate. In this case, the data vector has length n plus 1, which is one unit larger than in the previous time step. So, we can see that if our goal is to keep continuously obtaining new estimates of the samples of the process y as time goes by, this process becomes quickly infeasible. We will need to invert covariance matrices that are becoming larger and larger as time goes by. In addition, we will have to perform more multiplications and additions in this operation as time goes by. And furthermore, we will need to have a buffer of observations that is keeps growing in size as the time goes by. Can we find actually a more efficient implementation of this estimator, which maybe uses the fact that we have already obtained estimates of the previous samples of y. In other words, what we're looking for is a recursive implementation of the LMMSE estimator. And this recursive implementation is going to be such that we want to obtain the estimate of the process y at time n plus 1 as simply a linear function, this is what I denote with this operator, this is a linear operator, a linear function of the previous estimate of y at time n and the new observation of the process x obtained at time n plus 1. Well, we will see that this recursive estimation is precisely what the Kalman filter implements. But before we examine how the Kalman filter implements this recursive estimation of the process y, we will see a much simpler example of a recursive estimator. The example that we're going to see is that of the recursive estimation of the mean of an IID process. So imagine that we have a process x of m, which in this case I have defined as an IID Gaussian process with a mean mu x and some variance sigma x squared. And we would like to estimate the mean of this process based on the observation of a number of samples of the process x, in this case n samples, samples going from time 1 to time n. One possible estimate of the mean based on these samples is the sample mean estimator which I have denoted here as mu hat of x, n to indicate that it is obtained based on n samples and in this case is no more than an average of the samples. So we sum all samples from x from time 1 to time n and we divide the result by n. So imagine now that we let time pass and at time n plus 1 we observe a new sample of the process x, x of n plus 1. Now, we could recompute our sample average estimator by, again, simply taking the average of, in this case, the n plus 1 samples that we have now available. Now, let's see how we can rewrite this estimator of the sample of the mean at time n plus 1 as simply a function of the previous estimate of this mean at time n and the new observation x of n plus 1. In order to do so, the first thing I will do is to take this sum here and separate the last element of the sum. I will keep a sum first in which I'll have the first n samples of the process x and I will keep aside the last observation x of n plus 1. Now this sum here, as we can see, is very close to the sample mean estimator with n samples. In fact, I can rewrite this sum here as n times the previous estimate of the mean of the process x. If I do that, then I can complete my result by writing the estimator of the sample of x at time n plus 1 as n divided by n plus 1 times our previous 
estimate of the mean based on only n samples plus a term that depends on the new observation x of n plus 1. So, by doing so, I have rewritten my estimator of the mean of the process x based on n plus 1 samples, which in principle depended on all the previous observations of the samples of x, as simply a function of my previous estimate at time n, the estimate of the mean based on n samples, plus a function of the new observation obtained. In the following videos, we will see that the Kalman filter basically tries to implement a similar recursion with LMMSC estimates. We will try to obtain the LMMSC estimate of an unknown process at a given time based on the LMMSC estimate obtained at the previous time step plus a function of the new observation obtained at the current time step. Although the derivation will not be as simple as the one we have had here for the sample mean estimator, we will see that the structure that we obtain ends up being also a very computationally efficient filter that can compute LMMSE estimates with very low complexity.